Hello everybody, my name's James and for the benefit of those listening to the audio, you're listening to Ask James, my regular YouTube live stream, where I welcome questions from the YouTube community on anything football related or anything non-football related, if they like, over the next hour or so, I'm going to try and answer as many of the dilemmas in the questions as possible, as usual, for those joining live on the stream, smash the like, hit the sub button, questions will be answered as usual in order of submission. Firstly, let's start with the headline news this morning of the Champions League draw. Uh, Arsenal have drawn Bayern Munich and Manchester City have drawn Real Madrid. The winners of those two ties will meet in the semi-finals as well, which means Atletico Madrid, Dortmund, Paris Saint-Germain and Barcelona are on the other side of the draw. For the second year in a row, the Champions League path to the final from the quarterfinals has a very lopsided look to it. Uh, once we get information on Liverpool and West Ham's Europa League draw, I'll share that with you as well. That's due to be starting any time now, I believe. Uh, on Ollie Watkins, Unai Emery's press conference today is at 2.30pm. Obviously, he's picked up a gash leg last night in Aston Villa's thumping win over Ajax in the Europa Conference League. I suspect Emery is probably going to tell us they don't know if he'll be available. And I think that will be a truthful answer because it sounds like it's a cut. It just depends how that cut settles down when Watkins bends his leg, essentially. So I think the simple advice to most people is if you own him like I do, just play him and get on with it. And if you're free hitting, pick him and have a good first start. Right, let's get into the questions. MRCX says, hey, James, there are only eight players for game week 29, of which Watkins is doubtful and Moreno's a rotation risk and without Tony. Should I free hit 29? Cheers. Well, I've got currently eight. I've got Watkins and I've got Pau Torres, so I'm in a very similar situation to you because uh, Torres is obviously a risk as well. Minus four for two players. Take me up to 10. I might drop to eight. That's my intention. Uh, that injury last night didn't impact my thinking in terms of what I wanted to do at all. But it also is dependent in terms of how you'll sit for game week 30 and beyond as well. Might have an influence. For me, I'm likely to land quite well in game week 30 as I am. I, I don't need to. I think this is one where you just say, right, limit the damage. It's probably not a green arrow for me this week. And uh, we move afterwards. So you sound like you're in a similar position for me. I'll be tapping a minus four. Almost definitely for Tony and Madison. And uh, we'll go from there. The Sherwood says, Hi James, I'm already minus four this week to get nine. That includes Ollie Watkins. Would you take another hit to remove Aki for concert if it allows you to avoid City and Arsenal defence in 30? So at the moment, it's probably a no. I'll tell you why. The defender I'd like to get is Malagusto. He's obviously not playing this week. So I'm more liable to take a minus four then, I think, than take that minus four now. What I would say on Concer is I think that's the best of the picks from Villa. That's the one that I would have zero concerns about being a rotation risk. Was obviously suspended last night. So he's had a risk. You should have zero doubt there. He brought him straight back in when he came back from injury as well. So I'd be very confident in him. But a minus four for that now to play West Ham away... Nah, I don't feel with joy. And I've kind of learnt from my own experience of obviously taking a minus four for Kirkes last week, right? That didn't go so well. So that's possibly put the the brakes on my ideas of doing that, I think. I've long stressed that I thought hits for attacking players in this week would be fine, but for defensive players, no. CM Punch 2310 says, Hey, James, thoughts on the UCL draw? Kane and Dyer back in North London. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an exciting and interesting draw. Um... I think there's every chance Arsenal will beat Bayern. They've obviously been unlucky with who they'd play in the semi-final as well. I mean, there's literally, in terms of three teams being on one side of the draw, it's obviously as bad as it could have been, basically, for Arsenal. But the same applies to the other three teams as well. So, look, if they get to the final with that draw, then you'd have to say they'll deserve to do, deserve to do so. My instinct is that they'll probably beat Bayern. Um, I think the only team I would have definitively made favourites over Arsenal would have been Manchester City. I think even Real Madrid they'd have a very good chance against. So, yeah, I think they'll have a good chance with Bayern. What also doesn't help Arsenal, of course, is first legs at home in both ties as well. That doesn't help. Bayern will have no fans at the Emirates in the quarterfinal first leg. They're banned following throwing of fireworks in their game against Lazio in the last 16. So, that doesn't necessarily help the atmosphere, though. Um 
because it, it can be a weird atmosphere when everyone's supporting the same team. Um, but I think Arsenal have every chance against Bayern. The semi final is obviously going to be more difficult, even just from an experience point of view. City and Madrid know how to do the, the final hurdle, don't they? Arsenal don't. It's still an, ex- an experience in terms of that level at this stage. So it's, it's obviously a tough draw. I think they'll, they'll probably beat Bayern, I think, but it's, it is a coin flip. MRCX says, on another note, how you feeling? Is the pain any better? All right, yeah, Sunday and the, the walking around Birmingham didn't help me too much. We had to, the patrons will know, very long walk after the game at Villa Park last week back towards the city. So I'll be at Fulham tomorrow, struggling probably. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, mate. This is, I have a huge amount of pain in my foot, but it's also nothing like the pain I was experiencing three weeks ago. It's, it's, it's manageable, let's say. Thank you for asking. Uh, JP says, thoughts on next year's Champions League format? Better games, but more fixtures and more injuries. We did a whole podcast on it on Tuesday, mate. So I'm kind of largely going to skip that off. We did a whole podcast on it on Tuesday. Uh, Lee Sherwood says, not a great Champions League draw for Spurs. Why? <laughs> Why? Because there's more chance of the English clubs going out. I mean, Dortmund were going to be underdogs against whoever they played. Um, and Bayern Munich, I've just said, I think there's every chance they might lose to Arsenal. So it's basically England and Germany in competition for that fifth place. Plus, anyway, mate, I, I've been over this a number of times. Like... I love Tottenham more than I hate them, but yeah, get them out. I don't want them to win that trophy. We take care of our own business and finish fourth. Just doesn't matter, mate. And we've obviously given ourselves a great chance of doing so following the result of Villa Park last week. So, no, it's a great draw for Spurs. You think I would have rather Arsenal got like Dortmund or something like that? No, mate, no. Give them as tough as it could have been. JP says, thoughts on England squad and no Barkley White rejecting England. I've not looked into... The Ben White thing too much yet. I know the Athletic have posted a piece that I haven't read yet in terms of explaining why White has decided he doesn't want to be in the squad. I think mean, it's probably clear that Gareth Southgate wasn't going to call him up anyway. Um, there's obviously some form of clash there behind the scenes, and it might be that Ben White makes himself available again once a New England manager is there. On Ross Barkley, no surprise. I think he's had a great season for Luton, but I do, to an extent, I think he should be back in the England squad. No, not for me. And again, we, we did a, a pod on England last week, me and Clayton, in terms of what we'd like to see as the final Euro squad. The disappointment for me is that Kobe Mino's not being looked at. Otherwise, pretty content with the squad that Gareth Southgate picked. Ilan Melchior says, Hi, James, hope you're well. For a draft league, would you start Werner or Jimenez this week? Oof. Probably Werner. I wouldn't expect Jimenez to start, and I don't expect Werner to start either, but Werner's probably the more likely of the two. And has also shown, as as per last week, he can make an impact on the game late as well. So it's probably Ver- Werner, mate. Adam says, initial thoughts on the U- UEFA Champions League draw, James. As an Arsenal fan, I don't have a problem with drawing Bayern. I think we win, but the semis is where it's going to be very tough. Arsenal to render Kane trophyless. Well, I think me and Clayton have been talking about this a lot in terms of... I've kept saying to him that I think if you've got Bayern, it's, it's fine. I, having a second leg away makes it a bit more difficult. Um, but they've not been great. Admittedly, they've had their own injury problems this this year as well. I don't know how many will get back in time for the quarterfinal, but I, I don't think there's much expectation that Bayern Munich were going to win the Champions League this season, so it was very much expected. And I think your your thoughts kind of match up to what I've already said. FPL Pilkington says, Hi, James, if you could only choose one more for the free hit, assuming you have Bowen already, would it be Kudos or Morris? Thanks. Hmm. Um, it's a good question. I, I I actually I wouldn't be surprised if Luton score more than West Ham this week. Um, it, it's probably Morris. I think I think a template, if there is going to be such a template, front three will still be Watkins, um, unless he's definitively ruled out today. Tony and Morris. That will probably be it. Kudos probably doesn't form that midfield template. It's probably Morris. Morris is probably the right... I think mean, Morris is the more sensible answer. I actually think Forrest will probably go to Luton and win tomorrow. So if it was me free-hitting personally, I'd, I'd actually be going in for free, not in a Forrest, and possibly avoiding Luton completely. Therefore, for me, kudos. But I think, generally speaking, the, the more sensible advice would be to say, go for Morris. Uh, MRCX says, in game week 31, would you rather get Salah in for Sonny... Saka or Bo- uh, Salah in for Sunny Saka or Bone on minus four. Okay, get it. 
didn't sell any of them from minus four. It's probably Jared Bowen at, at that stage, I would have thought. I mean, Arsenal at home to Luton that night, so if you think uh, that week, so if, if you think Saka's going to start, which there could be some Arsenal rotation that night, but if you think he's going to start, then I think bear in mind as well, I spoke about this on the, on the chip pod a couple of weeks ago about the small minor possibility that Arsenal and Aston Villa gets postponed in game week 33. That's not likely unless um, UEFA decide to insist that Arsenal play on the, the Tuesday in the second leg of the Champions League. Uh, can confirm, by the way, in the Europa League, Liverpool have drawn Atalanta, first leg at home, and West Ham have drawn Bayer Leverkusen, uh, second leg at home for West Ham. Go back to Lee's question, that's a worse draw for England than the Champions League draw, is West Ham getting Leverkusen. That was probably worst case scenario. Uh, Benfica, Marseille and Milan against Roma, all Italian tie, makes up the Europa League draw. Uh, completely lost train of thought there. Uh, so I think it's it's it, um, on Arsenal. Sorry, that's what I was going to say. It's probably going to be they play Sunday against City in game week thirty, Wednesday Luton in game week thirty one, and then on on the Saturday evening game week thirty two Brighton. Then probably Bayern Munich on the Tuesday. That's highly likely to be Arsenal's schedule. Then a break to Villa on the Sunday, Champions League. Uh, second leg against Bayern Munich on the Wednesday. That's the most likely scenario. So you've got a period there. Arsenal are going to be three days, three days, three days, three days. That Luton game is ripe for rotation, right? Um, but that's going to be a more difficult sell. With Sonny, I think with Nottingham Forest at home in game week 32, if you're running through there, you're, you're probably not going to want to sell. It's a case to say Sonny for captaincy in game week 32. As I said, Arsenal go to Brighton. Liverpool go to Manchester United. Haaland goes to Palace. You've got Cole Palmer at Sheffield United as an alternative as well. But Sonny gives you a different option to perhaps Haaland in 32 as well. So I think by default, that's self Burren, isn't it? JP says, what three teams scores the most goals till the end of the Premier League considering form, fixtures and players? Uh, City, Liverpool and Arsenal, mate. It's not really much reason to think it won't be them. FPL Pilkington says, he's going double Brentford defence in Flecken and Reggie a bit overkill. What other goalkeeper would you say is worth considering instead of assuming you keep Reggion? Thanks for all your work, mate. Whether I'm presuming that the majority of people with free hit will go at least one Brentford defensive and it will probably be Reggion or Flecken and that might be determined by what Thomas Frank says to us. But we think Reggion's back in training and, and it's fine. So I can see people going both. I can see people almost definitely going for one on free hit. However... The most owned goalkeeper in the game might not be Flecken this week. It might be Ariola. I never realise when you look on Twitter, it looks like everyone's free hitting, but that's not quite the case. And I think those who have run through, for many, Ariola will be the goalkeeper this week. So Ariola is definitely one to consider. I think free hitters might be overlooking that they'll, they'll probably be, because of Ariola, a decent ownership of West Ham defensive players this week. And I'm not suggesting that's the best choice. But if Watkins is out... That certainly makes his prospects a little bit better as well. So, Ariola, I think um, I think Vicario might even be the best choice of goalkeeper this week, but he's definitely not amongst the best three Tottenham options. So, I can completely understand why people go Fleck, and I think that probably is the best choice. Is it overkill to go with two defensively? No, because according to uh, betting odds, they're the most likely team of the eight playing this week to keep a clean sheet. So, from that perspective, it's perfectly reasonable. Um, and I think because they're playing Burnley, there will be a desire to have free Brentford. And the only real alternative to double defensive is going Tony and Vissa. So I think people automatically fall into it. So no, it's it's fine, mate. I'm not I'm not comfortable with them defensively, by the way. Um, but we've seen that, like for example, Bournemouth not play very well at Burnley and still keep a clean sheet. As said previously, they're not great in either penalty boxes. So I get it completely. Murphy says, hi, James. Currently have six playing with no free hit and one free transfer. Sunning and captain is a given. Do I go Madison and Tony in for a minus eight or just one of them for a minus four? It's probably all of it, mate. The quality of the player you're getting in there justifies it. If you break it down like this as well, you're getting Sunny into captain. That's him having him effective twice, plus Madison and Tony. So it's effective of buying four players, really, particularly if Watkins was going to be your captain. Um, should pay for it in just in appearance points. So I think that's one where I'd say, yeah. Go to minus eight. I've debated it. For me, getting a minus eight probably means bringing in someone like Elanga, which I don't mind. I think he, I think he's probably even a great differential captaincy choice, arguably this week. But it's a bit rogue. I don't know if anyone's really going to have the confidence to do that. That's probably the number one pick for me if I was to go there. It's also factoring in Forest good fixture at home to Palace. 
in game week 30. But for the three players you're getting in, Murphy, yeah, I think the minus eight's probably worth it. The majority of other people with free hit are going to have the rest of them. Certainly Tony and Son are going to be nearly every free hit team. I imagine Madison will be in a lot as well. Hanny says, hi, James. What would be your favourite seven attackers in 29 free hit? For me, uh, Watkins, as I said at the top, I think should stay. And I think everyone should make sure they've got a good subs bench this week. There's no reason not to. I know people fear having the points on the bench, but it's better to have the points on the bench than nothing on the bench to help help you out. And as I said, I don't think we get anything definitive on Watkins and the game's not till Sunday. So it's probably not going to help. So I'd still go Watkins. I think be, for me, it'd be Watkins, Tony up front. Um, in terms of a third forward, I'd possibly be tempted by Visser, actually, rather than Morris. I'd love to say a Forest forward, but I'm not certain who's going to start between Wood and Aaron Yee. So I think I'd probably be midfield five. And therefore, I think it would be Sun, Madison, Bowen. And I'd probably go Gibbs, White and Alanga, I think. So that would that would be the seven for me with Watkins and then a decent first sub, which is going to be something like Visser or, or Morris. Uh, Ethan Justin says, Afternoon, James, should I be hesitant in any way getting rid of Foden and Saka if I'm on wildcard game week 30? No, I mean, the only thing relevant to you is, is the value. So, for example, I, many of you know I sold Saka a few weeks back. He went mental against West Ham. I reversed the decision. Because of that, I've not got huge value in him. I bought him back at 9. He's 9.1. He might even hit 9.0 by the time game week 30 comes around. So for me to sell him now, he's irrelevant. If you bought Saka at 8.5, that's naturally going to have a little bit of an impact on your decision-making. Similarly, what's the value you've got in Foden? If you're wildcarding in game week 30, essentially that's what your decision is. If you definitely know your wildcard in game week 30, it's a decision about value, not a decision about which player to sell. Vish says, I've got Senesai and Adams for 30-34. Wildcard in 35. Shall I get rid of both ASAP or just one? Adams. Bloody hell's Adams. Tyler Adams at Bournemouth can't be. Who's Adams? Am I having a complete mind blank here? Who's Adams? I mean, yeah, get rid. <laughs> I don't know who he is. Who's Adams? Uh, Senesai might be back for game week 30. Personal opinion is is probably unlikely. Um, so, yeah, generally speaking, it's probably a, it's probably a bin. Nikolai says, Morning, James. Got Kaminsky, Porro, Bayer, Emerson, Madison, Son, William, Watkins and Morris. Shall I use free hit or risk it? So, uh, priority there is to buy Tony, I think. Defensively, you might be a little bit short, um, but you've you've got the rest covered up, really. So, priorities, Tony. Uh, let's carry on, I think. In theory, you've got nine here. Tony is 10. Okay, yeah, there's a few. Watkins, Emerson, Bayer might miss out, but from, uh, it's probably a carry on. Okay, so Ethan's corrected and said wildcard 31 now. So, uh, yeah, I mean, wh who do you rather play in City Arsenal? Is it Foden or Saka? For me, the choice is Foden. But again, there is value representation to that as well if you know you're going to wildcard in 31 and have Saka and you bought him at 8.5 and you've only just got on Foden then it's probably self Foden because it's close enough isn't it uh, yes I'm well Nikolai thank you mate Vish says what are the top teams to target for 30 to 34 for transfers if wildcard 35 well can't definitively answer that because it's very dependent on the FA Cup results this weekend but if they go as planned and then the projections work out as per my project projections then I think Manchester United, Newcastle will be top two to potentially go into. And I think that'll be Newcastle first, then Manchester United. Also, don't ignore Chelsea over that period, I would say, is pretty important. And obviously, if Chelsea lose on Sunday, they'll definitely double in 34 and would go to the, the top of the list. I think Everton for enablers, possibly not so attractive going up to that period. But in terms of Burnley at home 32, Forest at home 34, there's definitely some use you could use there for rotation with someone, if looking at someone like Brantthwaite. Uh, Tottenham is a move on after 32. So I think Tottenham 2 Manchester United in game week 33, if United doubled in 34, would be popular. I can definitely see at that point people going Sun to Fernandes or Rashford, <laughs> irrespective of what their form is and stuff. So there's a few teams for you. But as mentioned on our, our Patreon podcast this morning, 
Like if Newcastle win at Manchester City tomorrow night, the whole outlook is going to change dramatically if that eventuality happens. Uh, CM Punk twenty three ten says, providing no injuries, when would you replace? Who would sorry? Would you replace in game week thirty for Salah, Foden, Son, or Gordon? Palmer and Saka going nowhere for me. So are you not going to sell Son before Luton at home? I, I mean, if he does well again this week, I think Son might even be the most kind of engaged player, captain player in game week thirty. Actually, maybe even more so than Mo, because that that would be really difficult to sell. Um. As just mentioned, Newcastle got a good run over that period, so don't necessarily want to get rid of Gordon. Palmer, as you obviously said, is going nowhere. It's possibly Foden with reluctance then. Hanny says, Tony is a risk risky captaincy question. Um, I think if you'd have gone back four or five weeks, most of us would have probably thought we'd get here and be captain Tony. And those who want to do so is absolutely fine, right? They're playing one of the weakest teams in the league. There's Hall capability there. So for me, he's probably, as it stands, the second best choice behind Sonny this week. Is it risky to captain Tony? Well, not particularly. It's probably more risk to, to answer your question, probably more risky not to captain Son is how it's beginning to look. Simon Kurt says, hi, James. Has Matty got back to you with what the score is yet? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think he was probably quite pleased at that point that towards the end of the game he was on the other side of the pitch because he was getting dogs abuse. Um, Gavin Richardson says, uh, TFI Friday, James, have you heard UEFA's estimate for next year's Champions League draw? Four hours, they're going to automate it and probably try and screw the EPL teams. Why would they try and screw them? <laughs> Why? Um, yes, we discussed on Tuesday's pod how would they do the draw? Surely it would take so long. It sounds like it's going to be perhaps one team pulled out of a hat and then it will just randomise everything from there and it will be quite a short process then done by a computer. It'd be, it'd be way too long to do it automatically, to draw every fixture and stuff. So, no, I, I think... I, I don't know how they're going to do it. Will it be something you can watch online while the computer works it out or something? I'm not sure because I still think it needs to be done in live and real time because of that you know you're saying oh they'll screw the Premier League teams we'll be plenty of things oh Premier League teams will get favours and stuff so I still think something needs to be live somehow even if it's the comp I don't know the computer working it out so I don't know how they're going to do it. it it is um, a failure in the in the procedure of the the, the groupings if you will um, that people won't get to see it live necessarily. I need to think about that. And I bet they've only just started thinking about it. Jerry Domayu says, Hi, James. Hope you and your family are well. Since I'm not free hitting in 29, would you do a stupid hand to Porro or Dominic Solanke to Tony? I did Neto to Mads already. That's obviously Pedro Neto with my free transfer. Good luck this game. We can take care. You too, mate. Uh, I Priority would be Tony for me. That said, I don't know what the rest of your defence looks like. And he might look a mess for game week 30. And I think Porro is a rare one where if he's going to be really good for you for 30 and perhaps 32 as well, then there could be some justification in taking a hit there. And, and Destiny Doggy might also fall into that category as well. Uh, Alex Allegretta says, have a good weekend, James. You too, my friend. Uh, CM Punch 2310 says, fixture dependent, of course. If we go as per your predicted fixtures for 34, 35, 37... Do you think there might be merits of a 33 wild card instead of a 35 wild card? Yes, possibly. My idea at the moment is to wild card in game week 31, um, but it were definitely things that can change that. And looking at 33, even for me, because I don't have the bench boost, even 34 in itself, I might even wild card in 34 and free hit 37. There's lots of different avenues for me at the moment, and I think getting in just before the Newcastle Manchester United doubles if those happen, and you're obviously avoiding Manchester United's fixtures against Chelsea and Liverpool, could be a good play. A reminder, as per that chip pod as well, the two Uniteds have Burnley and Sheffield United at home, respectively, in game week 35 as well. I see a lot of people looking at free hit 34, which is fine, based on the projections. But don't you want a lot of that for 35 as well? It doesn't get any better than Burnley and Newcastle at home. I'd arguably want six of them more than I would for the double week, maybe. I'm don't know. Neither with European commitments. Interesting. That said, it would be a weekend after they've had a midweek fixture. Do you get some rotation? 
Uh, you can spin that narrative either way. But yeah, plenty of different ways to skin this. It's always the same, right? People want to push their narratives for what they're doing with strategies. I know when I do the chip pods, everyone wants to say, oh, what's the best strategy, James? Well, judge your team and let's talk it through. And I haven't really got time to be looking at everyone's team. But what's right for me isn't necessarily right for you. And people want to push, you know, free hit now or, or don't free hit now. And people feel like, you know, they can't change and free hit now. You want to free hit now? Free hit now. Like, it's fine. Like, everyone's got slightly different teams and stuff. For me, it's just not justifiable to free hit this week. That doesn't mean that's the case for you, right? Most of you will have bench boost still for the end, right? So my strategy is going to be different to a lot of you. I say it all the time and it, people hate it, but it is play it your own way. Uh, Jerry Dharma Yu says, if Shaw can't make it to the Euros with his injury, do you see Gomez as starting left back or trips like during Euro 2020? Between Curtis Jones, Gallagher and Minor, who's the best Rice partner? Okay, so two different questions there. I think in the first instance, Southgate would be more likely to favour trips. Um, but I, as said on that podcast I did with Clates 10 days ago, we both would definitely take Joe Gomez. And I regretted not speaking Curtis Jones on that podcast because those who listen to me regularly will know I've been pushing for a while to actually get him in the England squad. He was on the list of names to mention. A different question came up and it got overlooked. But I discounted him from my final squad purely because the injury he's got at the moment and thinking, obviously, he won't make this one, which has proved to be the case. I don't see him getting his first call-up directly before the tournament. That also now applies to Kobe Mino as well, Jerry. So by default, the answer is he's going to be Gallagher. The one thing Gallagher obviously does have is that high-intensity work rate. Um, should be great for tournament football. In terms of his best partner, um, my personal opinion at the moment is it's Trent from that group he doesn't really feel like there's much point in answering that question I think by default the answer is going to be Gallagher my personal opinion would have been if it was up to me would have been let's see Kobe Mino play with him that's what I would have liked Gavin Richardson says do you think that the Champions League draw is better for the UK teams and their coefficients no no I know it's not, it's not better um, but the English teams are strong the West Ham drawing by Leverkusen is not good, right? West Ham obviously beat a German team last night. This time, they're playing Leverkusen, right? They're obviously going to be big underdogs. That's more of a problem than the Champions League draw. But it's still very much in the English club's hands because they would have think, even to project before the draw, we wouldn't have projected West Ham to go through. We would have projected Bayern to go through. We'd project Liverpool to go through. Arguably, the projection for the four Champions League semi-finalists would have been the four that's all landed on the same side of the draw so yeah sure it's it's bad for Arsenal and City perhaps for the coefficient it's also bad for Bayern Munich and as said whoever Dortmund were going to draw Dortmund were going to be underdogs against so I don't think it matters too much uh, Tom Skinner says hey James on free hit this week would you pick one team and go all in on their defence or spread the risk reward of picking one defensive asset per team not blown away by any of the defence no one of the things I speculated on one of the bits of the content we did this week was if Arsenal and Chelsea had gone ahead, I think most people would have been on sort of like double Arsenal defence and perhaps Porro this week and with Flecken in goal. I think that would have been so template and, and obviously Saka on top of that as well. That would have been so template for a free hit team. But no, did I, I don't foresee any team keep the clean sheet this week. So I, I certainly wouldn't want to go big. I completely understand the double Brentfords going around. And I also don't mind double Tottenham. Purely if people want to go Poro, Andu, Doggy and Son and want to go alternatives to Madison, perhaps want to go Forest defensive players or something like that, that I don't mind. I think it's only Brentford or Tottenham. There's no way you'd go free of any of them, is there? I don't think. Nah, you couldn't anyway because of Tony and Son. So, no, nah, it's not on the table. Uh, Ivalio Giacov says, Gibbs White or a Langer not on free hit. There's a little bit more risk in a Langer. But that's the way I would go. Um, I think there's a little bit more upside in him. His underlines and his returns have been pretty good this season. Uh, Luton clearly have vulnerabilities um, in terms of in behind them. I think Elanga can expose that. It might well be that it gives White finding him, by the way. So, yeah, really like Anthony Elanga. Good fixture in game week 30. That would be the preference for me. Also, Nuno did make some quotes, um, which I saw uh, FPL News. One FPL News, great Twitter account to follow, um, had shared earlier today when Nuno was saying that they had a specific structure to try and close the game in sanctuaries against Brighton. And there was a particular tactical idea behind that. 
which you'd have to say as they lost 1-0 prob- to a set-piece goal, largely was effective for them. So, yeah, I fully expect Alanga to be back in the team tomorrow, and that would be my preference. James Brennan says, would you hate double Spurs defence on free hit with Udogi and Poro? Midfield will be Kudus, Sun, Ilanga, Burin and Pakatar if fit. Thanks. Now, there's a perfect example. Like, I don't mind that. If that's the preference of what you want to go with rather than matters, yeah, he's fine. Joe Pickle says, early Champions League predictions, assuming you've seen the draw. Um, Manchester City final against one of PSG or Atletico Madrid. One one of that. That's if you ask me, but it's tough. Even for City, it's so tough to have to beat Madrid and then one of Bayern or Arsenal. Um I guess the real beneficiaries, I mean we're talking about beneficiaries for coefficients and stuff. The real beneficiary from that Champions League draw, surely, is Liverpool. Because of the intensity of those games that City and Arsenal have got to have. Uh, Joe Pickle says uh, that's what we've done. Gavin Richardson says also think you must be a mind reader as I researched the new Champions League format last week and enjoyed that podcast. Do you think the extra two group games potentially affect double game week 34 next year? <laughs> no. The the biggest impact, um, and I haven't seen the, the full schedule for next year in terms of the Premier League dates. I think I'm pretty sure Ben Krellin's already posted it somewhere, actually. I'm pretty sure. If you ask Ben, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure he's got a spreadsheet of next season already. Of course he does. He must do. Um, it's more the impact of the cup competitions that they need to work out, right? There's two Champions League group stages. Sorry, let me rephrase that. There's two Champions League match days in January next year. Right? So you just think about that logically. In January, right? It's four midweeks in January. You're gonna uh, currently the EFL are saying they want to still have two leg semi finals. I think that will become one. Also, where are you put in FA Cup third and fourth round replays, it just doesn't exist. It's not possible. They've got to work it out with the domestic cup competitions first and foremost, and that's something we've we've covered. We did a pod on Patreon a couple of weeks ago talking about the future of the League Cup, which I think most of you would find interesting. Uh, who's next? Ruben Villa says, Hey James, is Tony a must to own? I have one free transfer. I can do Solanke to Tony. I don't have Palmer or Salah. Minus eight down the line to get Haaland as well. Is Tony worth it? Can you take him on? Sure. Would I say he's one of the required players this week? Yeah. Yeah, I would. I think logically speaking, most people buying like me are going to buy him and nearly everyone on free hit is going to have him. So, the ownership's going to be pretty big. If you don't think he returns, take him on. But I would say he's he's one of the kind of the core five. And to be honest, that arguably becomes a four if Watkins is ruled out that I'd want to have. And one of them's a little bit dodgy in terms of it's probably Madison or Porro. Probably at least one of them for those who are running through. I think you're going to want rather than just Sonny. So, look, you know me. I don't like to say any player's essential. If you believe he blanks this weekend, then, then of course he's he's not worth it, is he? But it might burn. Jerry Dharma Yu says, do you see Tony as, is, is, is this a must, uh, the same question? Do you see Tony as a must pick uh, or non-29 free hitters like me since Brentford have juicy offensive fixtures toward the end of the season or hold to Solanke with Bournemouth's double later on? Um, one key point on tomorrow on that. So one of the things I'd explained was, so I'm probably selling Solanke for Tony. If Watkins is definitively ruled out of this week, if Emery says, no, it's definitely out, no chance, I'm going to sell Watkins instead. I have to be 100% sure of that no chance. But I would sell Watkins instead. And that's for me, wildcarding in 31, to have the confirmed Solanke fixture against Everton and not know if Watkins is available. I'd be better off keeping Solanke under that circumstance. Here's a really, really key thing to consider. The majority of projections going around, I think, have Wolves and Bournemouth to go into game week 34. Now, mine has it currently for game week 37. However, should Coventry beat Wolves tomorrow, I'll be advising for that to move to game week 34. Um, And Wolves and Coventry kicks off tomorrow at quarter past 12. When the FPL deadline strikes tomorrow, we should be about 55 minutes into the Wolves-Coventry game. Now, to know at that point definitively that Wolves are going to go it's unlikely but I don't know let's just say Coventry were 3-0 up for example and that would then in my opinion increase the possibility of Bournemouth and Wolves doubling in 34 that might be an influence on your decision 
It might be. Be aware of that early kickoff tomorrow before the 1.30 FPL deadline. There might be something in it that affects one of your transfers. So consider that. Consider that for tomorrow if that sort of thing is potentially going to affect your decision. But remember, you won't definitively know. Unless, of course, you know, flip it the other way. Wolves are 4-0 up. Fine, you know. But then, you know, still a lot of people think that Wolves-Bournemouth will go into 34. Now, under that circumstance, Wolves wouldn't double, right? But Bournemouth would. So... Bear that in mind. Bear that in mind. Personally, I I think from that, yeah, get Tony in. Deal with the immediate in front of you. Tony, by the way, I think is a player who might largely be overlooked for the running because they haven't got any doubles. We know that. And we spoke on yesterday's Clash of Correspondence, the idea about Watkins being expendable for from game week 31, uh, which will be tough, right? He's been the highest scoring player in the game, but there's a case for it. With Tony... Then Brentford fixtures. I know 30 to 32 isn't brilliant. But I tell you what, 33 to the end is. And I wonder if those bench boosting in 37 will obsess over it enough that they just ignore him. I think he'll be of interest to me, Ivan Tony. Got eyes on. Um, and also having him... The thing is as well for me, if I ended up with him and then Solanke with Haaland as my front three going into game week 30... I might even then be more of a position where I can push that wild card back beyond game week 31 possibly as well. So that's why for me preference would be sell Watkins. But in terms of to go back to your point of getting Tony, yeah, generally I would get it done. James Wright says, smash the like everyone. Who do you think will win the Prem and any FA Cup upsets for the weekend? I fancy Leicester. Um, who do I think will win the Prem? I think the logical answer is still City, but all three teams got a great chance. In terms of the FA Cup this weekend, no, not anticipating Sharks. The, the one, that, ironically, I said this on our Patreon pod this morning, the one that I, I think is possibly most at jeopardy for the favourites, and the favourites being the two Manchester clubs, Chelsea and Wolves, might actually be Wolves um, at home to Coventry. Obviously short of a few players in offensive areas at the moment. They will pick a strong team. There's no doubt about that. But I think that's the one... It'll be a good sort of 5,000 or so at Molyneux in the way in tomorrow. That's the one might be a little bit of risk. Leicester have hit a, a little bit of the skids recently where, you know, suddenly Leeds and Ipswich are really breathing down their necks, actually. They're one winning four or so in the championship, I think, when most people thought they were going to run away with it. So uh, I think Chelsea will have too much for them. Manchester United can obviously impact Liverpool as well. But I, I just think that the absence of Martinez and a couple of others for United might prove a bit too much. Would be a boost for United if Hoyland was back available. I've not heard any word on that as yet. I think Liverpool win. The way Newcastle give up chances, it's difficult to foresee Newcastle getting through at City tomorrow night. James Wright says, ah, sorry, one more from Gavin Richardson first. In fact, there's one more from Jim, sorry. Jim says, hello, James Z. Uh, my chief dilemma this week is whether to take a hit to bring in Madison for Saka or Poro for Zabani. Which would see me doubled up the Spurs defence with the U-Dog, your, your opinion? Possibly depends on your three other defenders for 30, right? So you're probably happy to play Zabani and U-Doggy in game week 30, I imagine. Have you got another one that you're quite happy with? That might influence the decision. But uh, otherwise, I think, no, I'd prefer the Madison move, personally. Gavin Richardson says, uh, are you West Ham in disguise? Were you chanting that last week at Villa? Yes, 100%. <laughs> 100%, mate. James Wright says, better two-week punt for a minus four. Muniz, Vissa or Morris, or just keep Solanke? I think over the two, Vissa. I think, yeah. Um, Although... Subject to what you've got, there's a case maybe just to keep Solanke rather than that. I think most people would say Morris, but you said specifically over the two weeks. Morris goes to Tottenham in 30. Like, how much do you want that? Um, Greg Frost is no question just loving the chaos of the Watkins potential injury. Best of luck all. Um, David Toss says, what percentage of your working hours do you think are on camera versus off camera? Fuck. <laughs> That's a blinding question. Um... Oh, jeez. Uh, this is going to be terrible for the audio. I'm trying to work out numbers in my head. Let's say... Oof, uh, average two to two and a half hours a day once you factor in the the patron content. Uh, that feels about right. I don't know, maybe then deadline stream as well. Uh, about 
13, 14 hours a week in terms of physically in front of a microphone, if you will. Um, so what percentage? About 20, I suppose. Roughly. You do, you do. Yeah, I don't stop. Steve says, hi, James. Can't make tomorrow's deadline stream and just joined. What are your thoughts on Duran instead of Morris? Should Watkins miss out on a free hit and will have no internet? So setting up team later. Yeah, Duran and Diaby um, will both perhaps quite quickly appeal. Um, I think Diaby definitely starts if Watkins is definitively ruled out. I'm not certain that's the case for Duran. I'd also be a little bit concerned of his minutes. Remember, he's obviously had his own injury problems recently. It might even be dependent on Jacob Ramsey's fitness as well. I'm thinking about what they do deeper. So I could see what Tielemans and Diaby kind of be in the front too, if Watkins is definitely ruled out. I think it's dangerous. If Ramsey's ruled out, there's more chance of Tielemans then playing perhaps in a deeper role again. So. Now, enough to free hit him in? No, probably not. I'd, I'd argue maybe more be keen suddenly on Diaby, maybe. I think both carry a little bit too much of an element of risk, particularly when you can have Bailey, Louise. It, it feels more like one, uh, which forward? Right? That, uh, that's probably what that is. Rather than necessarily wanting Duran over perhaps the villain midfielders, you, you want a different forward. I get that. I don't think Duran would be the one for me. Uh, Trini says, hi, James. I have 10 players without free hit as I welcome in 28. However, Watkins is one of these. Should I do Watkins to Tony or just leave it? Initial plan was to roll this way. It depends what Emery says, doesn't it? Let's be honest about it. You, if Emery says he's got a chance, you're not selling him. And again, to repeat, for free hitters, I think unless Emery says he's out, you should get him on free hit and you should start him and have to cover. Because he probably either plays or doesn't rather than he's a substitute or plays 20 minutes. It's more likely he starts or doesn't at all than gets the you know twenty minutes, for example. So I think it's you don't want to sell him. I think if, if free hitters, imagine free if you're free hit this week and you go without him and he starts and he does well. Oof. Nah, you wouldn't want none of that. So if he's definitively ruled out, Trini, yeah, make the move. Otherwise, yeah, I'd leave it be. I think. Charles says, I had James, what would you choose between Vissa and Tony? Vissa stays in centre and have three goals in three games. Tony has set pieces, pen, and play behind Vissa without return recently. Yeah, but they all could also change to a 4 3 3 tomorrow. I don't think they will, but it's something we speculated um, on our Brentford Slack channel with our patrons, actually, that yeah, they might do. They might go to a 4 3 3. Vissa on, on one side, Lewis Pot on the other because of the opponent. And then suddenly, Tony's by miles the better choice, I think, under that circumstance. Now, I don't think they will do that. I think they probably will still play a back three, but they might do that. For me, it's still Tony all day long. FPL Kratos says, Hi, James. Hope you're well. You alluded to the fact that if you were on free hit, you would have three Forest players. I assume one would be a Langer. Who would be the other two be? I'm on free hit, and I had similar thoughts. Gibbs White and Nico Williams would be the other two for me, mate. Uh, Rob says, who's the dodgiest pen taker this week then, do you reckon? That's the free hit keeper to target, in my opinion. Wow. So not Trafford. <laughs> um, it's probably Leno then. Yeah, legitimately. If that's if that's your, your thought process. It's probably Leno. Um yeah, Martinez is obviously good in terms of saving pens, if you want to look at it from that perspective. Who would take for Forrest? We're not sure if it's what Gibbs White or Wood. I suppose it depends on the team. Morris is a good pen taker. Pacatar is probably good for West Ham. We know Douglas Louise is a good pen taker for Villa. Yeah, it's, it's probably it's probably Sun, and therefore, you, if you're genuinely picking your keeper on that, it's Leno. Uh, Gary Richardson says... Having some wildcard 30 slash 31 goalkeeper dilemmas. Really want Pickford, but I'm unsure which budget keeper would rotate best and be good for a bench boost later. Probs a question for next week, we think. Yeah, maybe so. Uh, I think Anana might be one that grows in popularity, actually, particularly subject to what we might hear on Nick Pope over the coming weeks. Uh, I think that might be one. If you look at it now as well, Based on my projections, you've got Anana double 34. You've got Fickford double 37. The real answer we'd love to tell you is the Chelsea goalkeeper. Um, if one of them got injured for the rest of the season, it's every everyone on wildcard would steam into the other one. 
I think. We just haven't really got enough confidence in it. Like We probably think Sanchez starts tomorrow, but it's the cup. And Petrovic has done pretty well. And I'd hate to go down that route. And then there's also the fact of, well, what if Chelsea don't do well in the next few game weeks and their season becomes irrelevant? Do they then just chop and change them? Yeah, <clears throat> that would be the ideal third Chelsea choice. But don't think you can. So I think Kanana might might be one that, that comes into thinking for you. Um, Dubravka, if Pope wasn't going to be back, but let's be honest, doesn't save much. So I think that will come clearer for you over the next 14 days or so. Uh, excuse me. A frugal Frostbite says, I'm well card in 30, not bringing Haaland back. My team can be incredible without him. He's too much money. Okay. <clears throat> Shafwan says, Hi James, would you bring in Madison for a hit? <coughs> Excuse me, for Saka. And then reverse the transfer for a hit in 31, wild card in 28. Yeah, it could do potentially. Yeah, it might be the sort of thing I end up doing. Uh, Ryan says, Hi James, Bowen, Kudos, or Ilanga for a minus four. Uh, playing in game at 29 and 30, then wild card 31. Don't reckon Tottenham Fulham to be high scoring game. So not bringing in another Tottenham midfielder other than Sun. Cheers. Uh, from your choices, my preference genuinely would be Anthony Alanga. But nah, he says that. I've already got Bowen. It'd be Bowen for me, mate. Just a cape, but he might end up back out wide. He's such a consistent animal. Bowen for me still. Uh, yeah, no, if I didn't have Jared Bowen with that choice, yeah, it'd be Bowen. Uh, Steve says, hi, mate, hope all's well. On free hit, play 3-4-3 three, three or 3-5-2. Three, Cheers. Uh, the answer is uh, play 3-4-3. Three, three. <laughs> keep Watkins in your... Uh, no, play 3-5-2. Keep Watkins in your lineup. Uh, no, I, I would I would be 3-5-2, I've already said, with like a Vissa or a Morris as first sub. That's, that's what I think I'd be doing. Darren Ashman says, hello, mate. Is it a good idea to ignore Brentford defence and go with Zuma and Ariola instead of Region and Flecken? How many minutes did Zuma get last night? If it was 90, that would concern me. Um, if you fancy West Ham, you go for it, mate. But as covered earlier, I don't think any of us are massively keen on double defence from anyone this week. Gavin Richardson says, um, Ari, your Newcastle beating Man City, no chance, unfortunately. Although in 12 13, Pardew put out a fifth round League Cup team away there, led by Ren uh, Rolando Ahrens and Ryan Taylor, and we won 2 0. It's the hope that kills you. Uh, yeah, it is. It's a cup game. Madness can happen. Uh, Gazman says, Hi, James, on a free hit. Please pick one from Kudos, Morgan Gibbs, White, Ilanga, or Louise. Good luck this week. From that list, Ilanga. Craig Boy Crook says, hello, James. Uh, you beat us. We look dead, but we are but buried just yet. <laughs> uh, he says, up the villa. Play it your way. He's spot on, by the way. Thank you, Craig. Listen, and I've, I've bantered Villa a little bit this week, but I've bantered partly as discussed at the end of COTC yesterday, uh, partly because of in admiration. Villa fans kept telling us all year, treat us seriously. So we're treating you seriously by bantering. Um, it's still very much in your hands, right? He says, technically, that's not true. Um, but kind of is. Big Phil says Udogi or Poro on free here. I know Poro has the stats, but Udogi impressed me more every time I watched him play. Um, yeah, we've spoken about this a bit recently. I mean, the money's irrelevant this week if I'm free here. The pricing just doesn't matter. It's just one player or the other. The preference is uh, it's, it's always just slightly with Pedro, I think, for me. Um, but Destiny was really good on Sunday in that second half against Philip. It was his best performance for some time, actually. It's still just Porro for me, personally. Uh, David Tillstone says, Hi, James, I can get nine with a minus eight, giving me Ariola, Cash, Porro, Sun, Madison, Bowen, or Alanga, Barkley, Tony, and Watkins if fit. What are your thoughts on this versus a free hit? Um, so you're on six, I'm guessing, at the moment. I mean, the nine is perfectly reasonable, right? You've covered up all your bases there, basically. I think it's it's fine. I think it's fine. But it does depend what you're taking that minus eight for, right? Like, if you're taking that minus eight for Ariola, Cash, and Barkley, then no, just free hit. If you're taking it for Tony, Sun, Madison, or Bowen, then yeah, I think it's perfectly reasonable. 
FPL Big Lick says, hi, matey. Sat at 3.2K overall. Nice. Says uh, five to play this week with one free transfer. Went to save free hit until later. Thoughts. And play up Sky Blues this weekend versus Wolves. Uh, good luck. Enjoy it. Um, gosh, very reluctant to tell someone at, at that rank based on uh, a four-line question whether they should free hit or not. Um, look, you know if you don't, you lose this week, right? You know that. You know that. Well, highly likely anyway. But how bad can the damage be with with what you've got? That's the big one, right? You're sitting there with five and you've got no Sun, no Tony, all that jazz has spoken about before. And I think it's free hit, isn't it? If you've got your core, I wouldn't stress about it too much. Like, it, you know, if Brentford kick clean sheet, how bad can it truly be? Even though we know there'll be people out there going double, is it going to hurt you bad enough? Where do you see the advantages later in the season? How will you set up for game week 30 and later on? Have you used your wild card, haven't you? There's so many elements there that that's really, really difficult to answer because you need to, particularly near your rank, you need to weigh up, right? You're going to lose this week, but how badly? And can the game be better later on for something else? That's, on the face of it, it's so difficult just to say, yeah, do it, don't. Personally, I mean, if you've got five, it's probably free hit, personally. But consider your options. Uh, Jerry Kneecap says, James, do you think the Premier League gets to keep its winter break next season with a new Champions League format? <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. There's this as well. So I've already said there's two available midweeks in January next year, which presumably is going to have to be for League Cup semi-finals, and we abolish FA Cup replays. What if we don't abolish FA Cup replays? In any case, if we have the cup competition, there's no winter break for anyone who gets to a League Cup semi-final. So, like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how they're going to play that. They might be able to play it that they have, um, you know, teams who play in in Europe play on the weekend before Europe and have maybe the weekend off before and everyone who's playing a game that doesn't involve a team in Europe plays then that weekend before <laughs> TV companies ain't going to love that because then you've got none of the big clubs playing on one particular weekend it's not going to go down well I don't know uh, my understanding is the intention is to keep it <laughs> good luck working out how that's going to look uh, N-E-K-X-Y-C says hi James hope you're doing well what are your thoughts on taking on Tony with Muniz as provides better long-term structure for me? Might end up getting both for a hit if Watkins is out. You have to consider that Muniz's place is beginning to be under threat. I do think he'll start tomorrow. But Jimenez is going to be close subject to what Marco Silva says. And we know that Breyer's sitting there waiting to play at any time, right? So if it works out for your structure better and you don't need the player, i.e., you know, you've used your bench boost, for example, cool, crack on. But personal preference there would be to stick with Tony mate you can restructure that afterwards I think you might find that you get towards sort of 33 and you're moving like an 8 million midfielder to something like Garnacho as an example and restructuring that way uh, Joe Van Canegis says Decky or Madison for me it's Madders mate um, I had a discussion with Clayton on our Patreon pod this morning about Kulizewski versus Johnson and one of the things that add to what I said on Monday's pod about being really confident that Johnson starts tomorrow and I still am what we weren't aware of when we did that pod on Monday was that Werner had a little bit of a slight problem going into the game, which is essentially why he didn't start. Now, I think Johnson took his opportunity and should should stay in. But I think if you're buying as well, it's probably Kulizewski uh, over Johnson. Not over Madison for me, no. Madison over Kulizewski, Kulizewski over Johnson. If you're buying for two weeks only, i.e. wildcard in 31, if it's just the one week... I still don't mind going Johnson over over Kulisevsky. I think it's the real... There's an element of risk in it, but I think it's the real one that could pay as a differential attacking player this week. Uh, Glenn Openshaw says, Hi, James. When's the best time to wildcard and what teams should we be targeting regarding double game weeks? The best time to wildcard, mate, is really dependent on losing your team, isn't it? All right. So, for many people, it's going to be game week 30. I'm hopefully going to be set up quite well for game week 30 if I avoid injuries and stuff. Therefore, for me, it's 31. But it might be, particularly if I end up selling Watkins later today because he's definitively out for a couple of weeks, it might be then that I look at 31 and go, well, I'm quite happy with 31 as well. I've got Tony at home to Brighton and I've got Solanke checks notes at home to Crystal Palace with Haaland at home to Villa. <laughs> what different front three am I wildcarding to? And then it becomes later, right? There isn't a, can't stress it enough. There isn't a, this is best. This is, there's, a, there's a what's best for you. Um, it completely depends on your teammate. 
And what you want to do with your chips. You've got bench boost. You've not got bench boost. FPL developer says, Mr. O. Morris. I'm going to say yes. Uh, Neil Kagan would like everyone to hit the like button. Thank you, Neil. MRCX says, what are your top five favourite Tottenham midfielders of all time? Dembele, uh, uh, are you asking Central? I'm going to assume that's for Central, so I'm going to exclude wide players. Dembele, Gascoigne, Modric. Those three, clear miles away of everybody else. The rest... controversial one maybe because it was a short period but I'm going to say Michael Carrick it was just outstanding for 18 months it was so good favourites isn't necessarily best is it hmm I liked Big Tom when Big Tom was at it he had a really good period in the in the, the kind of mid to late noughties when he was coming through I really liked Tom Huddleston. I don't, I don't think that's the right answer. You, know, you could argue in that case, say, Benson Corb, Bissouma, or Saar might all come, become it. I mean, Saar, from nowhere going into pre-season, he's in contention to be our player of the year, I think. F phenomenal season. But I think that the first three I mentioned, that's clear. I think then Michael Carrick. Then the rest, I need to think about it a bit more, I think. Yeah, I think Carrick fourth... And if fifth's tough, it could be a list of about 10 names. I mean, even say people like David Howes, I really liked when I was a kid. It wasn't the best aesthetically and stuff, but he was a Tottenham boy, loved the club, came through the youth ranks and stuff. I feel like every midfielder we had centrally between the late 90s and the mid-noughties must have been horrendous before sort of like Edgar Davids and Carrick. Edgar is in contention. We never saw the, we never saw the best of him. Certainly not. You think people like Wilson Palacios was absolutely outstanding for us in the 09-10 season. Yeah, definitely Modric, Dembele, Gascoigne, clearly comfortably ahead of the rest. Brad McKenzie says, Hi, James, which Premier League side would field the most English-born players on average? Christ on a stick. I, I don't know, mate. Um, Luton? Burnley? Arsenal? I'm not, I'm not sure. Not sure, mate. Uh, Gavin Richardson says, thanks for another great stream. Loving the Patreon content too. Cheers, pal. Uh, I've been on it today as I'm coffeeed up. Have a great weekend. Uh, and away the lads. Good luck, pal. Um, I'm going to cover three more. Uh, N-E-K-X-Y-C says, thanks for the answer, James. For the future, it's pronounced as uh, Nexic. Sorry, mate. Nexic. I will try and remember that. Please correct me if I get that wrong again, mate. Nexic. Thank you, mate. Have a good weekend. Uh, James C100 says, Hi, James. Thanks for your advice. Got a much needed 1 million rank increase with Bart. You know, doggy bench boost. Thank you. Well, good luck, mate. You pressed the button. I didn't. Pretty sure I said I didn't like bench boost in game at 28. So there you go. And finally, Goonsy says, Hey, James, do you think Solanke to Tony for a minus four is worth it? I already have five good attackers this game week. Well, I'm highly likely doing it. So I've got to say yes, mate. Thanks very much for everyone who contributed in the stream. Smash a like, hit the sub button. If you want to support the show, a reminder, it's www.patreon.com forward slash planet FPL. Do it because you want the additional content or because you want to support the show and the free content and streams like this. Next week's content isn't definitively finalised as yet, um, but I can tell you obviously it'll be Game Week Review podcast on Monday and Clash of Correspondence will almost certainly be on Tuesday next week and that'll be Chelsea versus Burnley with Gary Mantle and Jack Toner deadline stream tomorrow goes ahead at 12.30pm UK time exclusive to the Planet FPL YouTube channel which just leaves me to say thanks everyone have a great weekend hope your arrows are green and for the benefit of those on the audio cue music please Manchild